Whether you're interviewing for a new job or getting ready to go work on the job you already have, you need to look the part if you want to get the job or succeed on the job. Grooming and dressing properly will help you make a good first impression. When can you start? This lesson will give you practical tips and guidelines for dressing and grooming for any job or interview situation. Where do we start? Yeah, I've got a bus to catch or I'll be late. It won't take long, I promise. But that brings me to my first point. Marcus, how long does it take you to get ready for work? I don't know, maybe about 10, 15 minutes. How about you, Maria? Half an hour, more or less. Marcus, that's not enough time. Maria, you're on the right track. You can't just roll out of bed and show up for work or an interview and expect to make a good impression. You have to set aside enough time in your daily routine to make yourself presentable for the workplace. Man, I hate losing sleep. But you like having a job, right? You got me there. If you don't believe me, listen to him. If you can't take the time to take care of yourself and come to work clean and properly dressed, and if you can't demonstrate these basic skills, it's very unlikely any employer will consider you seriously for a job. You want the employer to focus on whether you have the right skills and attitude for the job. If you make them worry about your appearance and ability to fit into the workplace, they'll pass you by. Makes sense. So take it from the top. What should my typical routine be when I'm getting ready for an interview or work? We'll start with grooming and then talk about dress. And while some of these things may seem a little obvious, they're worth repeating because they're so important. Such as? Showering. Oh, man. Not optional. Do it every day. Same goes for deodorant. Come on, Marcus. You can't show up to work all smelly and gross. It's not that bad. Some days I don't bother. You should. Okay, okay. Get up early, hop in the shower. Next thing you're gonna tell me I have to buy some fancy soap or shampoo. Not at all. Just keep clean with whatever soaps you like. I use moisturizers and lotions when it's dry. Good idea. And since we're talking about skincare, remember to use sunscreen if your job requires you to be outside for any significant length of time. Gotcha. Be out in a sec. You're not totally off the hook either, Maria. What are you talking about? I'm always clean and smell nice, unlike some people. I heard that. Show me your hands. Been painting your daughter's room? Yeah, last night. I can tell, but I shouldn't be able to. Lovely shade of pink under those nails. Seriously? I know it might seem ridiculous, but these small details matter. You don't want people making snap judgments about you for something as small as a fingernail. Just like the resume and application process, the goal is to give the interviewer no reason to say no to you. You sound like my mom. Smart woman. Let me put it simply. To an employer, poor hygiene or grooming reflects a lack of respect for yourself and for those around you. If you can't be bothered to shower, keep your hair and nails trimmed, and come to work in clean clothes, what reason have you given the employer to think you can do a good job? In a way, your first job is proving you can take care of yourself and that you have the confidence to take on other responsibilities. Teeth, hair, face, all need tending to. No one wants to smell your morning breath. You got that right. Brush at least twice daily, especially after meals. Use mouthwash and floss to help prevent gum disease. You may want to keep some breath mints at work in case garlic pasta sounds good one day for lunch. Mmm, garlic pasta. Tasty? Yes. But no one wants to smell your lunch two hours later. Amen to that. When it comes to hairstyles, you should err on the side of simple and understated. This will allow you to fit in with the widest variety of workplaces. And it makes it easier to get ready in the morning. This means no green hair, mohawks, or any style or color that would make your employer look less than professional. Oh man, and I was just thinking of going blue. I can remember one young woman who came in for an interview. She had bright orange hair. I mean, I mean bright. It looked like her head was on fire. She also had two snake tattoos wrapped around her arms. 
Uh, she was sweet and soft-spoken on paper and seemed like a perfect candidate. But there was just no way she was going to work out in the job because she was going to be working out in the public. Her appearance could have jeopardized our image with our customers. So the end result was we passed her by. That and I think no one would have gotten any work done because we had been staring at her head. The same basic rule of thumb goes for facial hair. Nothing outlandish. As long as you keep a beard or mustache well trimmed, it won't be a problem with most employers. Most? Well, there are some employers who simply do not allow facial hair as a matter of company policy. It is possible you could be offered a job provided you are willing to shave. Really? No joke. If having facial hair is important to you, you need to factor that into your decisions when applying and interviewing for jobs. All these guidelines for your appearance in the workplace aren't meant to stamp out your individual style or prevent you from expressing your personality. It kind of seems like they are. I mean, what if I want to wear a lot of makeup? You can, but the consequence may be that you don't get offered as many jobs. The truth is, most workplace environments are fairly conservative. And as a result, these places aren't very tolerant of bold or outlandish appearance or behavior. So that means leave the bright red and blue at home. Don't forget the bright pinks. Watch it, you. The same conservative attitude goes for tattoos and piercings. So I shouldn't let my shoulder tattoo show? You'll want to cover your tattoos by wearing clothing to obscure them. Nose rings, lip rings, or other piercings that might draw unwanted attention should be left at home. The goal is to look the part, right? So think of the job as a role you have to perform. Like an actress? In a way, yes. Each role, each job, requires a certain look that may be a little different than your own. Outside of work, you can express yourself however you see fit. But as a general rule, you're more likely to find work if you stick to a more understated and subtle style. In makeup terms, that means more neutral and natural tones, I guess. Exactly. Keep it simple and natural. Within these limits, try to bring attention to your eyes since you'll be making a lot of eye contact, especially during your interview. You can consult with a stylist if you have questions about color or techniques that would suit your face or your complexion. In terms of what to wear for an interviewer on the job, there's, there's no standard uniform that's appropriate for every job. Now, that being said, the general rule is to dress up and not down. Even if you're not required to wear formal clothing, dress at least a, a notch or two higher than the clothing you might normally wear on the job. How you present yourself is how an employer will think you will perform on the job. There are no second chances to make a first impression. Dress inappropriately and you will create a negative impression during an interview. All your hard work with your resume and developing the right skills for a job could be undone if you don't pay attention to the way you look and present yourself. So what's wrong with this? It's all clean. I did laundry last night. No holes, no rips. My pants are pulled up. No boxes or briefs showing. Yes, you're on the right track for sure. Your clothes should be clean and your pants should always be worn on your waist with no underwear showing. The problem is, after that, you've taken the past of least resistance. Meaning? Meaning you've done the absolute least amount of work possible in dressing like this for your interview. It's a construction job. Surely you don't want me to wear a three-piece suit. No, a suit would be too much. A bit like Maria there. Hey! Don't worry, we'll get you sorted out too. But this is what they all wear on the job. All the more reason you need to make yourself stand out during the interview. Always remember you will represent the organization you work for. The more professional you look, the better you reflect the image of your employer. Even if the job is blue collar, you should arrive at the interview in clothing that demonstrates respect for the opportunity they are giving you. Nice words, but how does that translate into clothes? A button down shirt and some khaki pants would be perfect for any blue collar type job interview. It's no suit, but it's a far cry from jeans and a t-shirt. 
I think I have some clean khakis here somewhere. Same goes for your shoes. Make sure your shoes are presentable and well polished. This means no sandals or flip flops, ever. Tennis shoes or work boots are fine for on the job in a blue collar situation, but you need to have a dressier pair of shoes for your interviews. I have some old loafers. Guess I need to get some shoe polish. Once you have the job, there may be specific requirements like an actual uniform you're required to keep clean and in good repair. There may also be safety equipment like a hard hat, boots, or safety glasses or goggles you are expected to provide and wear. Your employer should inform you of the workplace dress code, but when in doubt, ask. Now this is a far cry from jeans and a t-shirt, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Didn't you just say, when in doubt, dress up, not down? I did. It goes back to what I said about the workplace being conservative. Your outfit looks perfect for a night out dancing. Thanks. It's just not appropriate for an interview or the workplace. The first question you answer when you walk through the door is, do you look like the right person for the job? You want to make sure you do the talking in the interview and on the job not your clothes or your jewelry. The jewelry too? Yes, the jewelry you're wearing is pretty, but again, it's flashy and makes a lot of noise. The more you move around, the more I pay attention to your jewelry and not you. This could be extremely distracting to your coworkers or to an interviewer. Same goes for perfume. Wow, even my perfume is too much? Perfume or cologne should not be overpowering. Just a hint of perfume or cologne is just fine. So what do I do if this is all wrong? Everything in moderation. There's a happy medium we can find by assembling a working wardrobe. Somewhere in your closet, I bet you have a casual skirt or two. You can mix and match these with a few basic blouses and you've got a good start. I might have a couple things, but this could get expensive and I don't even have the job yet. This is not me saying you need to spend $500 on a new closet full of clothes or a new double breast suit. Thank, Thank goodness. goodness. Most major department stores carry whole lines of affordable business attire for men and women, even casual, that would be perfect for a working wardrobe. If your budget is extremely tight, you should also look at local thrift shops. Many such stores carry a wide variety of secondhand business clothing, even suits at large discounts. It might be good to have a suit for interviews, just in case I need one. I guess I could look at a thrift store. And I suppose I can find a couple things to go with the outfits I already have. Basic colors like navy blue, blue gray, and neutral tones like beige, khaki, and white are always safe choices. It's a secretarial job I'm interviewing for. What if I can't decide whether the outfit I picked out is appropriate? In that case, I'd call ahead if possible and ask the receptionist at the workplace about the dress code. You could also stop by the workplace prior to your interview to see how people are dressed so you can avoid under or overdressing. I wouldn't have thought of that. If your workplace has a laid back attitude about the dress code or offers an occasional casual dress day, don't overdo it. No sweats, no shorts. Maintain a certain level of professionalism even in these situations. When you have assembled your working wardrobe, try on a few outfits. Base your appearance on what you've learned. Are you well groomed? Are you showered and are your teeth clean? Is your hair trimmed and styled appropriately? Are your clothes and shoes clean and suitable for your job? Did you keep your jewelry and perfume or cologne to a minimum? If you have any doubts at all, ask a trusted friend to evaluate your appearance. See if they think it's appropriate for the job. Some of that stuff seems like common sense, but never hurts to be reminded. The thing to remember is the interview isn't a beauty contest. Let's see if you were paying attention. What specifically is important about your appearance and in the interview? To be neat and clean. To dress appropriately for the job. And what does this show the employer? That we're organized, respectful, and ready to work. Be mindful of every aspect of your appearance because the person interviewing you will surely be paying attention too. If you look the part, Chances are you'll land the job. Whom would you give the job to? Him or him? Would you hire her or her? That's great. See you Monday morning. Thanks very much. So did you get it? 
I did. Yeah, me too. Dinner's on me tonight. One parting thought. Just because you get the job doesn't mean you're going to keep it. You need to maintain personal habits that will keep you on the job and working. This process, these decisions, begin every day with the grooming choices you make when you get ready for work. We've got the routine. And the wardrobe. I think we're in good shape from here on out. We know how to look the part. And if we look the part, we'll get the job. And keep it.